This is the second PC I've built, and I'm having some trouble with overheating. I've tried so many different things to cool it down. My CPU gets to around 90 degrees Celsius, which is super hot. I'm only able to run a couple of games. I'm having issues where my screen will just go black, but the PC stays on. So if you could help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. And this here is that viewer's toasty gaming PC. I can't really say broken, but if you can't get a game to run for longer than a few minutes without the screen going black, it essentially is. Specifications are pretty solid for a 1080p gaming machine. The GTX 1070 is a great value card, especially if you can find them for around $100 today on eBay. These still have eight gigs of VRAM. They don't run super hot either. They're quite efficient for what they are. Even though they're a few generations old, there's nothing wrong with one of these in a rig. And a Ryzen 5 5600X, a bit newer on the platform side of things. A bit concerned that we're having CPU related temperature issues apparently with a 5600X, that's not common. So in this video, we'll have to run through a bit of a checklist. Obviously, powering the system on, making sure it posts without issue, I don't think that's gonna be a problem here. We'll have to download a synthetic and definitely hone in on those CPU temperatures. If what the viewer is telling us is true, then we may have a cooler bottleneck here. It's likely this uh, looks like a Wraith Stealth cooler, which I'm not even sure shipped with the 5600X. This might not be enough, even at stock conditions. We'll have to check BIOS settings as well, make sure you know, crazy voltage or anything is being pumped through the chip. And uh, of course, the obvious stuff. We'll check for thermal paste to make sure the cooler seated correctly. There's a bunch of stuff that could be causing the overheating here, but uh, I don't want to jump to any conclusions just yet. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just use the secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that so sweet discount. First things first, you guys know the drill. We need to try firing this thing up, and I imagine we will get a post, again, based on what I was told. Power strip should be on. That's more like it. I don't know why I keep forgetting to turn that on. All right, so it sounds good. We get a post right away. Awesome. Um, and it looks like it is also loading into Windows. My oh my, this fan curve is aggressive. I wonder if this is just a result of current CPU temperatures. Maybe it's measuring higher than normal temps, and that's why the fans have ramped up. Not a good start. Now the owner has NZXT cam pre-installed. I don't usually use this for monitoring. It tends to be a bit resource intensive. You can see even under a very light load, our temperature is hovering around mid to low 40s. It's fluctuating quite a bit, but uh, this is still a tad higher than I'd like to see for a chip that's this efficient. So you can see I've got IDA64 loaded up and CPU temperatures are immediately concerning. We haven't totally leveled out temperature wise here and we're already in the 90s. Very clearly we have some sort of bottleneck. I think the cooler is definitely limiting us. There might also be something in the BIOS we can tweak, maybe disabling PBO, but I'd like to change the cooler out, give the CPU a fighting chance before pulling back at all in performance. Now, interestingly enough, we aren't seeing a huge scale back in clock speed here. We're still at about 4.4 gigahertz across all all six cores, uh, you can see the minimum is usually around three, three and a half, but uh, right now at 95 degrees Celsius, 4.4. So we're not leaving performance on the table, but this might also explain why the system would just randomly black screen in the middle of intensive games. In dire situations, overheating systems will actually completely cut power as if you were just yanking the power cable out from the back in an effort to preserve the overheating components. It's actually a good thing that this happens. The fact that it hasn't happened here is probably just because it's not able to get much hotter than 90 a black screen is somewhat of a, a symptom of an overheating system, but usually if it's overheating too much, it'll just, like I said, it's like yanking the power cable out from the wall. The system will just completely turn off. I imagine though we're not very far from that scenario in this case. Now, I figured while we're in the zone, let's go ahead and test Furmark in another burn-in. This is going to be much more intensive than IDA64, and I can tell you just after running this for a few seconds, the graphics card is definitely getting hot. See, this here is a blower style car. These are gonna run hotter on average. They're pretty good at removing air from tight spaces, but they're just not very efficient when it comes to actually keeping the GPU cool. Temperatures have leveled off just under 90 degrees Celsius, but I've gotta say, I'm not really surprised by this. Again, it's just a, a side effect of a blower style card, unfortunately. Uh, what I will do though is repaste the card in an effort to try to get this down just a tad because we are losing out a bit in performance since this card is having to scale everything back in order to keep temps from going any higher. We weren't exactly able to replicate the black screen, but the temperatures we're seeing just, they aren't great. Again, anything with a nine in front of it's just 
no bueno in my book. So uh, I'm going to start by disassembling the card, repasting that. I'll show you how to do it very quickly. These blower style cards are typically very easy to disassemble. Uh, and then we will tackle the CP side of things. We're gonna check to make sure that enough paste is over the IHS. We'll make sure that enough mounting pressure is, uh, is, is present with the cooler involved. Uh, and then we will likely need to upgrade the cooler to something a bit beefier. I'm smelling something like a Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 on the horizon. But first I wanna tackle this graphics card. Like I said, just a few screws to get to the GP itself. As you can see, this warranty seal is still intact, which means this card was never repasted. I'm not worried about the warranty itself though, because this card is obviously so old. Let's see if we can carefully separate everything here. So this is actually a standalone, look at that, just a standalone slab of aluminum. That's how these are designed. Yeah, this stuff is definitely chalky, which uh, you know, I'm not surprised by. I'm just gonna douse this with some isopropyl alcohol and we'll clean it right up. Honestly, this part is so therapeutic. A few moments later. All right, and uh, now the die specifically looks good, but the remainder of this board is a bit dusty, especially around the power delivery area. Also, another surprise for you. This uh, is uh, very gross, but it's also the intake side of the uh, fin stack that fell out when we disassembled the card. This is very clearly clogged. I imagine just removing this dust alone will drop temperatures by a few degrees. So we do this and then we repaste, and I think we'll have a much cooler running card, at least that's the goal. Now this is a lot better. It's not a deep clean, but it's still a massive improvement. Plus, no more clogged airways. So now we're just gonna repaste. I'll make sure to manually spread this since we are applying this directly to the die. And now we can work to reassemble the cooler. That is a clean bill of health. Now it's time for the Dark Rock 4. And I just realized we might not have enough clearance in this case. This is a quite the narrow chassis. So we might be limited in terms of tower coolers here. I don't know, we won't know until we uh, until we throw it in, I guess. First things first, let's check on the paste quality of the original cooler. It actually looks pretty good, so you can't see much on here, but coverage looks much better on the cooler side. Also looks like the stock paste, we'll upgrade that as well. And it does look like we'll have enough tower clearance. That is good news. The bracket is looking good. Thermal paste is applied and here goes the cooler. There we are. Looks a lot better and it's gonna perform a heck of a lot better. Normally I'd move this Wi-Fi card down a few slots. It's probably not gonna make much of a difference performance wise, but uh, we don't have a fan in the shroud just above this card because, uh, well, it's a blower card, so the only fan's over here. Supplemental power reconnected. And now it's time to try things again. Um, Always a bit of a delay there. <laughs> Hoping temperatures this time are, well, at least satisfactory, better than what they were before would be a huge win. I imagine the cooler swap's gonna do a heck of a lot for the CPU. I also hope that we can get our graphics card temps down, even a few degrees. For me, that would be an accomplishment. Kicking things off again with Ida64 stability test, I can tell you CPU temperatures already look so, so much better. Um, maybe not so much for our GPU, Again, there's only so much we can do with this being a blower card. We've, we've really done all we can without replacing it. But I will say CPU temps, I mean, that's that's a huge win. 12 seconds later. Ah, oh, crap, you know what I just realized? Don't worry, the test has already stopped. I forgot to reconnect the uh, graphics card fan. I cannot tell you the number of times I have forgotten that stupid cable. But of course, I'm not gonna hide it from all of you. Chances are, if I'm making this mistake and I do this stuff all the time, then it's possible you might as well. If you're wondering why your card's running super hot and you just disassembled it, it might be because you forgot to reconnect your fan. Let's try this one more time. Here I was about to blame a cooler design for my own mistake. I think temperatures are gonna drop now. Whew. Okay, nowhere near as alarming now. Temps haven't fully leveled off, it's only been a few minutes, but uh, you can see a massive difference already in those GPO diode temps. I'm also really liking our Furmark temps, no longer seeing anything in the 90s, have actually leveled off at around 82 degrees Celsius, very similar to what we are seeing in Ida64, which is a bit surprising, that's lower than I thought we would get. But that just goes to show you what a healthy cleanup and repaste can do 
for really any graphics card. And so I'd call that a success. I've got to say, swapping out the CPU cooler really did wonders for this chip. It is such a night and day difference temperature wise. We're nowhere near 95C anymore. We're not seeing any borderline throttling of any kind. We're talking well over 10 degrees difference. And I didn't change anything in the BIOS. I left the system exactly the same, fan curves the same. It's such a solid tower cooler with a very high TDP. It looks stealthy, it runs quiet. I'm gonna have it linked below. If you wanna check out the Dark Rock 4 or any other cooler from Be Quiet, I wanna thank them for continuing to be a product sponsor of this series. But not only that, repasting and cleaning up the graphics card also lowered temperatures significantly. Now we're in the low 80s and that's in Furmark. So if you're playing games that aren't necessarily taxing the graphics card to any crazy extent, you can expect temperatures lower than this. Obviously not an ideal blower style card in the 1070, but I think we've done fairly well considering what we're working with here and only really upgrading one component. Now, if you've enjoyed watching this one, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. That would be a huge help. Consider subscribing if you have not already. That red subscribe button is just, it's just waiting to be pressed, my friends. Consider checking out our relevant links in the description, including our free and public Discord server. If you want to support us on Patreon, you can do that as well. And find me on my socials, including Twitter, Facebook, etc. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.